Let's go across uh, first to uh, the big story of the day, a horrific story coming in and some gruesome visuals coming in from Kanpur in UP where over 20 pilgrims have been killed, mostly women and children, uh, after more than two dozen uh, and uh, many others are injured, severely injured when a tractor trolley overturned and fell into a pond in Uttar Pradesh's Kanpur district. Let's go across to Alok Pandey who's uh, monitoring the story. Alok, how many people were on board this uh, tractor? Where was it coming from? How did this tragedy uh, happen? Uh, it's a terrible tragedy and uh, like you said, over 20 people are dead. Uh, the numbers at the moment are varying between 22 to 27. Uh, it's very likely that the number will finally be around 25 to 26 or 27. Uh, because this was an overcrowded tractor trolley. And all of these people were from uh, villages in Kanpur, and they'd gone to a very famous temple in the area for some ceremonies. And uh, this tractor trolley was returning uh, and taking these people back uh, to their villages when it overturned and the trolley fell into a pond. Uh, now, obviously, it was extremely overloaded because, you know, I mean, you imagine a tractor trolley and then you think that there were some 50, 60 people there. Because there are also reports that many people have been taken out and uh, admitted to the local uh, government hospital. So if you have a death figure of 20 plus, plus another 20 in hospital, that tells you that this was a very overloaded trolley. Uh, how it uh, fell into the pond, did it lose control, did it hit something? That at the moment is not very clear because the police officials and the administration in the area is busy uh, in trying to rescue as many people as possible. And uh, the visuals from uh, the site, Sarah, I'm sure you've seen them, our viewers have seen them too. Uh, many of those visuals cannot be shown live on uh, TV, but they are very distressing. And I think uh, the maximum number of people who've died are women and children because they fell into that pond and then at least the children and some of the women would not have had any way of, you know, swimming out to safety or perhaps they were crushed under the trolley because there were some reports that the trolley fell in such a manner that it crushed a lot of people beneath it. Uh, so a terrible tragedy. Uh, the government, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, everyone has expressed their condolences. But I think more than that, it's also important for the administration to carry out checks and ensure that such overloaded vehicles are not allowed on the road. But that's for later. At the moment, the police say their priority and the administration says their priority is uh, to rescue and treat as many people as possible. But at least 20 people are dead and that story could rise further. All right, Alok Pandey reporting there. Thank you for those details. And the other big story of the day. The much-awaited 5G is finally here in India. Prime Minister Modi kicked off the commercial rollout of 5G services in India at a telecom event in Delhi on Saturday. And this service is now expected to progressively cover all of India over the next couple of years, potentially transforming India's digital landscape. It's been a long-running saga of India's 5G spectrum auctions. Finally saw some closure in 2022. We had a multi-band auction that wrapped up in August with 71% of the available spectrum uh, sold. That At that point, the government said that that was a positive outcome. It was a sufficient outcome to achieve nationwide 5G coverage within two to three years. But uh, several sectors, particularly the manufacturing sector, financial services, electronics industries, uh, would ex uh, benefit hugely from the deployment of 5G and with the improvement data transfer speed and reduced latency, the expectation is that 5G will be a game changer, especially in this space. India, under the visionary leadership... India goes 5G. Today at the annual India Mobile Congress, Prime Minister Modi announced the launch of next generation mobile services. Aaj देश की ओर से देश की टेलीकॉम इंडस्ट्री की ओर से 130 करोड़ भारतवासियों को 5G के तौर पर एक शानदार उपहार मिल रहा है 5G देश के द्वार पर नए दौर की दस्तक लेके आया है 5G अवसरों के अनंत आकाश की शुरुआत है मैं प्रत्येक भारतवासी को इसके लिए बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं
5G is expected to bring a significant boost to mobile internet speeds in India. While 4G speeds currently span anywhere from 10 to 60 Mbps on average, 5G is expected to range in the hundreds, which will allow faster downloads and seamless remote work. Additionally, 5G reduces latency, which is the time taken between an action and reaction over the internet. This reduced latency allows for critical applications like remote medicine, remote surgery and real-time interactions in industrial use. Demos at the India Mobile Congress showed how 5G could enable connected ambulances where doctors can start procedures remotely as well as connected cars that would be able to process self-driving data over the cloud. 5G is much more than the next generation of connectivity technology. To my mind, it is a foundational technology that unlocks the full potential of other 21st century technologies. Absolutely, we will be affordable. Every Bharat Vasi should be affordable for the device and the service. All three major operators, Jio, Airtel and Vodafone, are expected to launch 5G services in the coming months. However, Jio and Airtel are taking the lead with 5G availability expected in time for Diwali in at least eight major cities. When you launch 5G, there will be 8 cities in 5G Airtel. Delhi, Varanasi, Mumbai, Bangalore and some cities. Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai and Mumbai are expected to be the first cities to get 5G coverage. Airtel has already activated the 5G network at Delhi airport and will initiate the rollout today. Prices of services are expected to be competitive but there could be a slight premium that will be passed on to customers. 5G smartphone sales in India in 2020 and the next gen standard has made its way to mid-range smartphones already. From Minata point of view, we have an entire range. You know, from the uh, from the mainstream uh, chipsets like Dimensity 700, and up all up to uh, you know the flagship, which is Dimensity 9000 or 9000 Plus. So we have the entire range, so we can actually uh, satisfy the demand uh, in every uh, every different price segment. With the advent of 5G, India is ready to introduce the next generation of services on a high-speed internet backbone. However, reliability, accessibility, and size play a crucial role in ensuring widespread reach of 5G services. With camera person Ashok Mahale, Rubina Mongia for NDTV. And after the 5G launch in India, the External Affairs Minister took a dig at Pakistan at an event in Gujarat. Listen in. Our one Padosi, who is a expert in IT and information technology, who is an international terrorist expert. अब उनके यहाँ और सालों से ये चल रहा है कि हम इसका सामना कैसे करें और इसमें जो है हम दुनिया में हम दुनिया को हम समझा पाए कि आतंकवाद जो है कभी आप ये नहीं समझिए कि आतंकवाद राजनीति है या कूटनीति है आतंकवाद आतंकवाद है आज हमारे खिलाफ किया जा रहा है कल आपके खिलाफ ये होगा and India abstained from voting on a UNSE resolution regarding the uh, referendum on uh, Russia and on the annexation of four uh, Ukrainian regions. The Indian envoy to the UN has said that India is deeply disturbed by the recent turn of developments in Ukraine, but added that given the, quote, totality of the situation, India was abstaining from the vote on the resolution. The ambassador, Uchara Kamboj, reiterated New Delhi's position that uh, India was in favor of peace, diplomacy, and dialogue. Hours after celebrations by Russian President Vladimir Putin in Kremlin over annexing four key regions of East Ukraine and the continuing war in Ukraine, Vladimir, Vladimir, Russia has vetoed a United Nations resolution that proposed to nullify the referendums in the four annexed regions as illegal and invalid. A resolution proposed by United States and Albania at the United Nations Security Council. India's Prime While four countries including India and China abstained from voting on the resolution, it's now set to be tabled before the 193-member General Assembly with no provisions of a veto. 
The path to peace requires us to keep all channels of diplomacy open. India's Prime Minister has unequivocally conveyed this in his discussions with world leaders, including with the presidents of the Russian Federation and Ukraine. So has our External Affairs Minister in his recent engagements at the General Assembly last week. India's Prime Minister has also emphasized that this cannot be an era of war. World leaders continue to condemn the annexation even as Russia continues to threaten further nuclear action. And we're fully prepared to defend it. I want to say this again. America is fully prepared with our NATO allies to defend every single inch of NATO territory. Every single inch. So, Mr. Putin, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Every inch. And I have to be, I've been in close touch with, uh, with our uh, allies. Uh, we're announcing uh, new sanctions today as well. French President Emmanuel Macron slammed the annexation as a violation of international law and Ukraine's sovereignty, while the European Council has warned of fresh sanctions. Even as another anti-Russia resolution is set to come up before the United Nations General Assembly, India, in its very cautious diplomatic stand, at least till now, has been abstaining from voting against Russia, even though it has been reiterating its stand against the war and calling for international peace. With camera person Xavier Thomas, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. And the Rajasthan police uh, have uh, registered a case against eight persons for allegedly gang raping a 17 year old in Alwar. As per the reports, the accused, after raping this young girl, had blackmailed her with a video and demanded money in exchange. The accused persons had earlier already extorted 50,000 rupees from the victim, and moreover, they were demanding 250 in exchange for not uploading the videos on social media. नौ बाईस को इस्माइल पर के व्यक्ति ने आकर रिपोर्ट दर्ज कराई कि उसकी साढ़े सत्रह साल की बहन के साथ गांव के ही आठ लड़कों ने बलात्कार किया है इस पर मुकदमा दर्ज कर तब्दील सलमान शिव साहब सुषमा दास के सपोर्ट की गई है तब्दील जारी है पीड़िता का मेडिकल कार्य लिया है ग्रहण हो गए हैं शिव साहब द्वारा घटनास्थल का पिछले चार साल से जो राजस्थान की कांग्रेस पार्टी में ये सत्ता का जो खेल चल रहा है उस सत्ता के खेल में जनता पिसती जा रही है पिछले जुलाई और अगस्त के अंदर ही तक कम से कम 40 प्रतिशत की वृद्धि हुई है दुष्कर्म के अंदर राजस्थान में राजस्थान की सरकार को किसी की चिंता नहीं है बट ढूंढ मची गई है कि अध्यक्ष कौन बनेगा लड़ाई छिड़ रखी है कि सत्ता में कौन बना रहेगा जनता की बिल्कुल भी सुध नहीं है बिल्कुल भी चिंता नहीं है और ये तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति की वजह से हौसले बुलंद हो रखे हैं गुंडों के अलगाववादियों के चरमपंथियों के ये राजस्थान की क्या हालत बना दी है कांग्रेस पार्टी ने ऐसा बिल्कुल स्वीकार नहीं है और राजस्थान की कांग्रेस पार्टी को तुरंत जगना पड़ेगा नहीं तो जनता उनको जगा के छोड़ेगी and staying with Rajasthan, two girls were injured after a man on a bike threw chemicals at them. This was in, a, uh, in the Jaipur area. They were rushed to a hospital. They are out of danger. Efforts are underway to identify the accused. And in Karnataka, an FIR has been filed at the Chamara Rajanagar police station against a congress worker who was wearing a t-shirt. This while he was participating in the Bharat Jodo Yatra. He, an FIR has been filed against him because he was wearing a t-shirt that said, pay CM on it. The police made him take off that t-shirt.
and uh, the uh, Congress's uh, presidential uh, prospective or a hopeful Malik Arjuna Kharge has uh, is said to have communicated to the Congress working president Sonia Gandhi his decision to quit as the leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha. He sent a letter to Sonia Gandhi last night and uh, speculations now loom over who will be the next uh, Rajya Sabha leader of the opposition. Mr. Kharge also met with senior Congress leader A.K. Antony on Saturday. Meanwhile, the other candidate for the post, who was the first uh, to uh, make that move, has uh, tweeted that he's delighted to learn that following scrutiny, Shri Kharge and I will be squaring off in the friendly contest for the post of president of the Congress party. He goes on to say that may the party and all our colleagues benefit from this democratic process. And in Kerala, a man has been sentenced to 142 years in jail for sexually assaulting a minor. A POSCO court in Kerala's Patanam Titta sentenced a 41-year-old man to 142 years in rigorous imprisonment for assaulting a 10-year-old child for two years. And a controversy has erupted over disciplinary action taken against a guest lecturer at the Mahatma Gandhi Kashi Vidyapith in Varanasi after a social media post by him on why women should not participate in the Hindu festival of Navratra. Dr. Mithilesh Kumar Gautam, a guest lecturer at the Department of Political Science, was dismissed from service, banned from entering the campus after he wrote on social media, the women should read the Constitution of India and the Hindu Code Bill instead of fasting for nine days during Navratra. उस समय की जो सिचुएशंस थी जो स्थितियां थी उसको देखते हुए हमें जो विश्वविद्यालय की सुरक्षा और छात्रों की सुरक्षा और खुद उस शिक्षक की सुरक्षा सुरक्षा के दृष्टिगत जो विश्वविद्यालय प्रशासन निर्णय ले सकता था जो हमारी परिणामावली में व्यवस्था थी उसके तहत हमने उनको जो है जो अतिथि प्रवक्ता पद से जो है विमुख किया and staying with university news, there have been clashes on Saturday between the police and the Allahabad University students. Students who are protesting against a 400% fee hike that the Allahabad Central University has announced. Saturday has been the 26th day of a fast unto death declared by the students. University says they point out that this is the first hike in 100 years. But students say many of them cannot. They simply cannot afford the 4,000 rupee fee. We're going to go in for a short break, but we have more coming up after that. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, Indore has been adjudged India's cleanest city for the sixth time in a row, while Surat and Navi Mumbai follow it on the next two spots. This, according to the central government's annual cleanliness survey, the results of which have been announced in the category of Best Performing States in the Swatch Surviction Awards 2022. Madhya Pradesh has secured the first position, followed by Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra. And finally, Durga Puja festivities in Kolkata have resumed in full swing and uh, crowds are descending on the streets of Kolkata for pandal hopping, our favorite puja activity. This year, celebrities are back after two years of muted festivities due to the pandemic. And here's how Kolkata is celebrating this year. <laughs> around 
Of course, there's a lot of fanfare, a lot of activity, a lot of crowds on the street. Everyone. That's news at the south. Bye-bye.